So to compare the two, embryonic cells are the most potent. Without a doubt, we can do the most with those. Um, just about any regenerative application, and you hear that a lot. You hear that a lot um, nowadays, instead of uh, stem cell, where they talk about regenerative medicine. Regenerative medicine means they're using stem cells. Um, Sorry. Right. OK. So if you take part of the embryonic stem cell, is that really in that embryo? I'll give you that later. OK. It's <laughs> like you could take the molten stem cell, apparently not for us. Yes. Yeah. Um, the other advantage of embryonic stem cells is that they're easy to paint. Um, like I said, they derive from vitro fertilization. They're they're being made without you know without stem cell research anyway. So they're right there. There's an easy source for them. No, you know we know how to get them, and they're relatively easily maintained. There's been a lot of research done. I said it's not perfect. It's not you know and it's not easy, but it's easier than you know, maintaining uh, adult stem cells. Um, just because they're more undifferentiated, we can keep them from, you know, from differentiating. They're, they're, they're more prone to remain in that state. Uh, the advantage of adult stem cells is that if you were able to find a way, like for example, um, uh, a friend of mine was doing uh, some research where he was actually isolating adult stem cells from people. Uh, that, that had a particular disease, and he was able to make some change to their stem cells and reintroduce them into their bodies. In this case, this is a uh, uh, a transplant that runs no risk of immunological rejection because they're your own cells. So that's you know one advantage of having adult stem cells is that if you were able to get sufficient numbers of them and reintroduce them to the same person, then that you run have to no risk of rejection. Whereas embryonic stem cells, if you, you know, unless you get them from somebody's identical like twin, uh, you're, you're not going to have that genetic compatibility. Probably not going to have that genetic compatibility. So there's always going to be some problem with rejection, which is the case with all transplants, actually. So I want to talk about potency. Potency is a very critical concept. Um, potency just means the ability to do certain things. Ability to, be, to become different cells. And uh, different stem cells at different stages have different levels of potency. Tony potent cells are cells that they're the original cells that were formed in the union of spermatocyte and oocyte. That, that first group of cells, one, two, four cells, those are Tony potent. They can become just about anything. Once it becomes blastocyst, if you get any, any layer than that, the cells divide into different germ layers. And that's one. Uh, that's the, the first crucial differentiation step. And it's very difficult to go backwards in differentiation. So total potent uh, are from the first few divisions of cells, and those are the best in terms of potency because you can do just about anything with them. Total cells uh, are descended from the total potent cells, and they can um, form the, the three basic germs out there. So you can do just about anything with them, too. Just about anything. Multipotent cells are one step down from third but You can do a lot of things, but not everything. Uh, adult stem cells are multipotent. Not aquatic stem cells are multipotent. They can give rise to all of the different immune cells we have, the red blood cells, uh, and even you know, transdifferentiated neural cells or skin cells and things like that. The unipotent cells um, are cell cancer cells that only reproduce one cell. So skin stem cells are really unipotent. They only really make skin cells. They just sort of sit there and, uh, under your uh, under your skin there and just replicate skin cells. Um, so those, they really can't do a lot with it unless you want to just make skin cells. So, yeah. That, uh, thing. Does that go along with the stages of the cellular division from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16? Does that match up in terms of the totipotent and so forth? To where you get the unipotence to 16? No, no, no. So there's no association between those well, two. Well, once, once you get to the blastocyst, you've got those, you've got third cells. Okay. Yeah. And then everything was, everything was past that, um, you can use potency. So this, this helps illustrate that. This, this differentiation. Uh, up at the top, you've got a single red cell, 
that can divide whatever cell divides between two cells. Uh, one of the cells is a red cell, one on the right uh, stays a red cell and that continues to divide. The one on the left divides again and might divide into a red cell and a green cell. The green cell is further differentiated, but who's the potency? I think uh, that green cell cannot replicate the red cells. And the, so the green cells can replicate themselves or they can replicate the orange cells. But the orange cell then is permanently differentiated. It's become a cell that no, can no longer you know, replicate itself and, and generate uh, or, or further differentiate itself. So this is the differentiation process as it comes down in sort of lineage from that first cell to the last cell and, you know, of course, all the two cells we're talking about here because they replicate a lot. You get a whole bunch of cell numbers. Yeah? Is this kind of like cell evolution? No, not, not really. But there's a lineage. I mean, there's a lineage there which is similar to evolution, but um, it's not that these cells are becoming different species. Like that. What, what, what you really need for medical research, um, I is the red cell. Yeah. You know, you well, these differentiated cells. Okay. Um, you know, it comes to the point where red cell evolves to the point where it's not as usable, magically. Yes. Uh, might be that time, 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 but it is limited. Any, any primary cell culture, not just stem cells, but you can get cells, you know, from, from your gut or something like that and culture them, cells from your, your skin and culture them, and those are considered primary stem cells, not stem cells, primary cells because they come from a living organism. And those cells, those primary cells are good for a little while, but they're not good forever. The cells are good forever, become good forever because there's mutation induced, or we get them from a cancerous tumor. Tumors are cellularly immortal. And those are good for some applications, but the, the change that, uh, that they undergo to make them immortal and make them last forever can alter their, their biology and can make things not work the same in these, these immortal cell lines, the same as they work in primary cell lines. So, yeah. Um, for embryonic stem cell research, um, does it have to be blastocyst to be able to be used, or can you use it in the stages before? Well, again, the, the embryonic stem cells only come from in vitro fertilization. So, the blastocyst is the terminal. But that's as far that's as far as the embryo can itself develop in the dish. It's not going to go any farther. In order for it to go farther, it's got to be implanted into the woman. So to get the stem cells, it has to be a blastocyst? Well, not necessarily it has to be a blastocyst. And you, can, you can take it from an earlier time point. I'll mention that when there's been some recent research to suggest that that might be a possibility. And can we use the frozen ones? The for stem, stem cells? Yeah. I would think so. Because they're blastocysts. Yeah. That, but it, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they freeze them and they say, typically though, the ones that are frozen are frozen, you know, because somebody wants to use them you know, to have a baby at some point. And so I don't think they would go in and take the frozen ones, unless, unless they're being discarded. Right, right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, there are stem cells, there are stem cells in the umbilical cord, called cord, cord blood. Um, but that, those are not embryonic cells. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. The the cord, the, the stem cells in the cord blood are probably the least differentiated adult stem cells that you're going to get in your life. So as far as adult stem cell applications, cord blood is the absolute best thing that. Well, potentially, yeah, potentially anything that adult stem. Cells